Hello, Facebook Live. We are cooking fish today, we're cooking light. Number one question I get from friends and family over text and email is, how do I cook fish? And uh, we know at Cooking Light, that you should be eating more seafood for good health. Here's how to do it. We wanna reduce the, uh, the number of berries to get you to cook fish tonight. All right, so we're gonna do fish two ways tonight. Super, super easy, we're doing fish slow and fish fast. All right, so I've got some farm Scottish salmon. Picked this up today at the Fishmonger. Um, very, very easy fish to cook. Uh, it's one of the most popular fish out there between salmon and shrimp. Those are the, the uh, first and second most popular seafood to cook. So we're gonna cook sl uh, salmon the slow way. Slow baked, it's gonna get meltingly tender. Super easy. So pie plate, why a pie plate? Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of one pan dinners. We know you guys like them. Uh, we use a lot of sheet pans to do one pan dinners. And I've got a lot of pie plates uh, laying around at home, so I'm gonna use them more. I think pie plates are the next one pan. So, a little bit of olive oil. Bottom of the pie plate. Two big fillets of salmon. You can do one big center cut piece too. A little salt. We're using kosher salt today and pepper. And I've got my oven set to 300 degrees, and this is gonna slow bake for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. A little more olive oil. Do how, some... how do you make sure the white stuff doesn't come out of the fish? So the white stuff coming out of the fish, we'll cover that, but that's the albumin, that's the protein that is uh, starting to leak out of the fish. That means it's probably overcooked. And the fresher the fish, and the more gentle you handle it, the less likely that the albumin is gonna start leaking out of the fish. Lovely term, isn't it? Okay, so we've got some fresh thyme. You can use basil, you can use oregano, whatever you've got on hand. And we're gonna add a little bit more flavor here. We're gonna throw some shallots in here. It's great with some garlic. And this is super, super easy. The whole key is low and slow in your oven. You can add whatever seasoning you want. So the exciting thing about salmon right now is that uh, I just got an email from a company out in Alaska. The wild Alaskan um, salmon season, particularly for kings, is just about to, uh, to pop. So when you're out there, you might pay uh, top dollar for wild salmon, but it's the very best if you can find wild king salmon um, that is fresh and uh, delivered to your fishmonger, go for it. It's really, really good. We're also gonna add a few tomatoes to this as well. I've got cherry or grape tomatoes here. You can do multicolored if you want. And uh, when I'm slicing up tomatoes, I like to use a serrated knife. So this is my little tomato knife. This is what I'm using all the time. Um, to Kabi, say thank you. Thanks for joining us. All right, so back to our tomatoes. This is my tomato knife. Some people call it a bagel knife. I use it for tomatoes all summer long. See how easy that is? This is gonna be our slow baked salmon. So I'm gonna throw this in a 300 degree oven and then we're gonna start our fast fish. Okay, Heather, can you use another fish? Yes, you can use any fish you want. I'm using salmon for the slow bake because it's got so much fat in it. All those good oils um, are gonna help it uh, stay meltingly tender. But you can do this with any white flaky fish. I would do it with a thicker fish. You know, you can do this with a flounder, like a really thin one, but I like to do slow bake with a thicker fish leave it in the oven for a bit longer and uh, it'll get really, really tender that way. Uh, but really, both of these techniques are for your favorite fish. So whatever, you, whatever kind you like, whatever kind you can find. If you're landlocked and you don't have a good uh, fishmonger near you, you can use fresh trout um, or you can use another freshwater fish. I love catfish um, for either of these applications. Catfish is great, often maligned, but it's a really clean product. Um, you should look for US catfish. It's really, really good and it's very neutral. And if it's raised right um, through aquaculture, then it's not going to have that off-putting taste. Okay, so we got a. Sorry, tell everyone what temperature you're at again. So slow baked salmon, salt, pepper, olive oil, a little bit of shallot, a little bit of thyme, um, lemon juice, in a 300 degree oven. And if you're just joining us, this is Cooking Light live on Facebook. 
uh, we're doing fish two ways, slow and fast. And we just put our slow baked salmon in the oven at 300 degrees, and now we're gonna go fast. So I've got a cast iron skillet. Uh, we are heating this up um, to high. I've got a little bit of canola oil. This is gonna help make it non-stick. Why cast iron? Uh, a seasoned cast iron skillet is great for cooking fish and any kind of meat. Uh, because it helps you pick up a nice sear. Um, if it's treated well, it's seasoned well, and, and the cast iron is hot, then it's going to uh, it's going to be essentially non-stick, which is great for fish. And I'm going to show you how to uh, ensure that your fish does not stick, because this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. Some of our users want to know why you didn't wash the fish first. Why did I not wash the fish first? Mm -hmm. Because. I don't believe in, when you have a protein and you bring it home, I don't believe in washing it. Particularly, you know, the old recipes would say, rinse the chicken. Um, all you're doing there is you're just, you're spreading germs around in your sink. Um, if the fish is, comes from a reputable source and it's clean, it's on ice, um, you don't have to wash it. I'm sure I'm going to get nailed for that one, but, uh, but I do not wash it. Um, because I know, actually know where it came from and, the, and I know the guys that caught this, I know the boat uh, that they were on, so I trust them. Okay, so we're heating up our uh, cast iron skillet. Why canola oil? Canola oil, um, you can use olive oil here. I've got canola because it's, uh, it's cheap, it's healthy, and um, it's what I had around, but you can definitely use olive oil here. Uh, it's also got a little bit higher smoke point than olive oil which is nice, and uh, you can see my, my pan is starting to smoke. So, how to season fish to cook it the fast way. So we got a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper. You know, a lot of the, uh, the fancy chefs that have been trained in French kitchens say you can't use black pepper on fish. Um, I'm calling BS on that because white pepper is not a uh, favorite of mine. One thing I do whenever I'm cooking fish in the summertime, I throw turmeric on it. And I'll show you why. The turmeric's gonna give it a really rich color. Um, it's gonna pick up some beautiful color in the pan. It's also gonna give it a little bit of a uh, of flavor too. So turmeric. What that, coconut oil? Uh, you can totally use coconut oil. You can definitely use coconut oil. You can do clarified butter. You can use your, any of your favorite fats. Okay, so we've got olive oil, salt, pepper, and this is, uh, this is farmed redfish. You can use any white flaky fish here. Okay, so go back to your skillet. You see how this skillet is uh, starting to smoke? That's about as hot as you want it, and I'm gonna show you why. Fish goes in. This is fish the fast way with cooking light. You hear that sound? That's the sound that you want to hear. That's what's going to create the sear. It's also creating a non-stick surface. So this is farmed redfish. Um, it's what Paul Prudhomme made famous back in the 80s, black and redfish. And I like it because it's meaty. Um, it's got a thick white flake to it. But you can do this with any kind of white fish. You can do this with any kind of more oily fish like salmon. Um, this comes from the fillet of a white fish, but we would do this with flounder, we would do it with red snapper. Okay, a lot of questions about mahi. Mahi, totally do this mahi. If you look at the, the property of this fish, look at that, that uh, structure of the muscle. This is totally like a mahi type fish. Same kind of diet, acts the same way in the pan. So I get a lot of questions um, about fish. I think one of the barriers that for people is that they feel like their house smells fishy and they want to avoid that. So there's two things that you can do to avoid that. One, you can ensure you're buying really fresh fish. When you're at the fishmonger and you're looking at it, um, the ice should be well stocked, the fish should glisten, um, it shouldn't be soft to the touch. Ask your fishmonger to uh, let you borrow a pair of, of gloves or put a piece of uh, parchment of the fish, touch it. If it feels really springy and, um, and really dense, the fish is really fresh. Do the smell test, smell it at the fishmonger. Does it smell fresh? If it smells fishy, chances are it's not fresh. All right, the other thing you can do is you can cook it outside. And what I'll do during the summertime is I'll take this cast iron skillet, I'll put it directly on my grill, and I'll use my grill as a stove. And that's the best way to do it. Okay, if you're just joining us, Facebook Live, 
cooking light, we are cooking fish two ways, slow and fast. Slow way, I've got slow baked salmon in the oven. Um, the fast way, I've got some farm redfish and a cast iron skillet on the stove. Um, I want to hear from you guys. What, what challenges do you have with cooking fish? What kind of fish are you cooking tonight? Let's hear it. What's the deal with turmeric? What's the deal with turmeric? Why is it so good for you? Turmeric is the hot ingredient right now. Um, there's a lot of people that, that uh, are using it now in juices uh, and using it in food. It's one of those functional ingredients that, um, that science is beginning, the evolving science of, of, uh, of ingredients that it's, it helps your circulatory system, I think number one. It's really, really popular and, uh, and Indian cooking is really popular and, uh, and Southeast Asian cooking. I like it dry uh, in a powder because it's really, it keeps for a little bit longer, but you can also find it at, at uh, grocery stores now as a little knob that's smaller than ginger. Uh, you can grate it, you can chop it, you can mince it, and you can use it like garlic or ginger um, when you're doing stir fries, when you're doing smoothies. Um, and then the other reason why I use it for fish, I use it like paprika. It's, it gives it a beautiful color. Um, and if you're worried about your fish uh, browning the right way, it kind of gives you a head start. And it makes it look really, really rich and beautiful um, and deep, deep yellow when it's done. So, so what are you going to serve with it tonight? So tonight I'm going to do some rice, um, some brown rice, and I'm going to puree up some cilantro and garlic and olive oil and some lime zest, and I'm going to make green rice with that, do the fish, and do a uh, simple salad, some radish, and that's dinner tonight. Lots of uh -huh. You've caught some drama over pepper. Caught some drama? Yeah, you need some pepper on the fish. Tell us why again. Because I like it. Because I like it, and that's what I do. And uh, I'm not a big fan of white pepper. Sorry, Eric Repair. I just don't like white pepper. Um, it smells like socks, funky socks. So yeah, we're doing uh, we're doing black pepper. If you don't want pepper, don't use it. Uh, but I like it, so that's what we did today. So how do you know when the fish is done? This is really a scary thing for people. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We are, but someone's okay. asking. They're ready okay. for you. <laughs> so there are two ways to tell the fish is done. One, there's the poke test, and I can tell you right now this fish is not done because I could look at it. But if you poke it um, and it bounces back, it's not done. The other way is to use an old-fashioned cake tester. So this is what it looks like. They cost about 25 cents at a baking store. And you can use an old-fashioned cake tester just as you poke and t uh, tell the cake is done. So watch this. I'm putting this tester through the fish and I'm getting resistance the whole way through. I know this fish is done and by this fish, it's medium well done for the middle when the cake tester slides in very easily. That's how you can tell it's done. So 25, 50 cents at a uh, baking store, a Teco cake tester, super easy. The other thing I want to talk to you about fish cookery, uh, if we can use the term cookery today, is a fish spatula. This is one of the most versatile and best tools in the kitchen. So why I love a, uh, a fish spatula, you see that sharp edge here? It's gonna ensure that you can get up under the fish and pick it up on a grill or pick it up on a, uh, from a cast iron skillet. It's also got these, uh, these holes here, so uh, it's more streamlined. The other thing I like about using this is you can use it as a strainer. If you're frying something, if you're poaching something, if you're uh, blanching asparagus in a pot, you can reach in and, uh, and pick it up. Okay, and we're gonna use our, our fish spatula, which you should get one if you don't have one, to flip the fish. Okay. See that gorgeous color? It comes from the cast iron and the, and the heat of the pan, but it also comes from the tumor. All right, so that's gonna keep cooking. If you wanna fast forward this even more, you can throw it into a 350, 375 degree oven um, and continue to pan roast it. We're gonna finish it this way, and uh, as this is finishing, we're gonna pull out the, uh, through the magic of TV, we're gonna pull out our slow bake camera. I think we need a magic space room. That's right. We need the TV. Okay, so we had a, uh, we had a viewer ask about the white stuff, and um, this probably cooked for a little bit too long. I've got plenty of the albumin here, you can tell here. Um, this probably went for a little bit too long. I like my salmon medium rare. And we're gonna we're gonna show uh, how to tell it when it's done. So one way to do it is to stick your finger in it. And if, if it doesn't push back, then it's done. You see that indentation right there? I know that's done. I know this salmon is at least medium. The second way, as I said before, is with a cake tester. All right. So I'm gonna slide this right in. 
and if it meets no resistance all the way through, then it's done. And then if you want to get super pro about it, you can hold that tester in. Touch the bottom of your lip. If it's warm, then it's definitely done. Okay, so slow baked salmon, uh, super easy, super delicious, very versatile. 300 degrees for about 20 minutes. Uh, I probably went a little bit too long here for my liking, but if you like your salmon a little more well done, uh, there you go. You can serve this as is. You can serve it with uh, a little more olive oil and some lemon. This would be great with a uh, fresh yogurt sauce. You know, mix a little bit of, of uh, whole milk yogurt with some olive oil and a little bit of lemon zest and some uh, minced herbs, delicious that way. So that is our slow baked salmon. And um, we're gonna go back to our fast pan roasted redfish here. So you've just literally been in the pan now for like six minutes. Yep, six minutes, and I can tell we're probably gonna need another three or so minutes um, to finish it up. And, and I've turned the heat down a little bit. We're going a bit more gentle, but uh, we'll just talk a little bit about the color and the sound here. Uh, you've got a nice gentle sizzle, a nice gentle sear. And uh, because the pan was hot when I put the fish in, uh, that's what created a nonstick surface. Heating up the oil till it was shimmering, putting the, the pan in. I think one of the common mistakes that people make when they cook the fish is they want to they want to rush it and they want to put the fish in too quickly. That's when it sticks. So just wait. And then if you're just joining us, we're cooking uh, fish two ways. We're cooking light, Facebook Live, the slow way and the fast way. Slow, we did uh, slow baked salmon at 300 degrees and a pie plate in the oven. And the fast way is pan roasting it in cast iron skillet. And um, when I'm at the beach in the summer, this is what I'll do probably three, four nights a week. I'll take the cast iron skillet out to the grill. I'll put it directly on the grill, close it, crank it up high, get that cast iron ripping hot, a uh, little olive oil or canola oil, season the fish, put it right on there. Great for shrimp too. And that way there's no smell in the house. Um, all you have to do is clean up the cast iron and, uh, and you're outside by the water drinking a cold beer, so it's so perfect. People are asking about how to clean the fish from the cast iron. How to clean it out of the cast iron? Yeah, so they want to yeah. Oh, um, salt. salt. Yep. So when I'm done with this, I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. But while it's still warm, um, and we showed this a couple weeks ago with when we were talking about kosher salt in particular as a uh, scouring agent, um, I'm gonna use really coarse kosher salt. And while the the skillet is still warm, I'm gonna pour the kosher salt in there, add a little bit of water. Take a towel and a little elbow grease, and I'm going to wipe it. And I'm going to particularly get around all the edges, and that's going to bring all of the, uh, the scum up from the bottom. And it's also going to take some of that uh, that smell away. And um, it'll be ready for baking in the morning. So what are the two main cooking utensils that we need? Okay, so the three main things you need: <laughs> your hands, okay, um, sharp knife. And when you're cooking fish, a fish spatula, a spatula. This is an indispensable, indispensable <laughs> very articulate tool. Uh, this is uh, probably a medium-sized fish spatula. It's what the pros use. Um, I took it from my buddy who works in a restaurant kitchen. I love it because not only is it good for scooping up fish um, and coming up underneath it, but it's great for uh, using as a strainer when you're, you're blanching or frying or poaching uh, things. Okay, so we're gonna finish up our fast fish. Uh, this, you could, you could put this on a plate and serve it right away, uh, but we're gonna embellish it a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit more flavor. So, so far it's just salt, pepper, and turmeric. Um, I'm gonna show you a, a cool trick here uh, on how to finish it. So we've got some lime. Lime goes great with the turmeric. And you don't have to do this. You can just do uh, the salt and pepper and call it a day. I've got a little bit of garlic and smash this and some butter. Look people, a little bit of butter is okay. Um, it's not going to kill you. It's, it's going to help enrich this fish. It's going to make it taste even better. It's going to round out the notes from the acid. And we're just using a couple of tablespoons and not all of it's going to go in the fish or on the fish. It's going to add flavor. So here's how we're going to do it. So about two tablespoons of butter in the pan. Your limes in. She's got what? Bluefin tuna? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, look, 
Isabella, if you're cooking bluefin tuna, um, I'm not going to judge you, but probably should be the, one of the last times you cook bluefin because there's not many more bluefin on the earth. <laughs> but enjoy that bluefin. Hopefully it's from the belly. Hopefully it's really, really high quality. Um, I would season it with salt, pepper, some cracked coriander, a little bit of chili flakes. Get your cast iron ripping hot or get your grill really, really hot and sear it really fast uh, as you would a steak and eat it rare uh, with a squeeze of lime, maybe a little bit of wasabi mayo. And uh, that, I mean, that sounds delicious. Okay, so here's why we're doing this. This is how we're gonna finish it up. Take this butter, throw the garlic in. Take that butter, drizzle it over the fish. And all you're doing here is basting it. And look, you don't have to do this. It's just gonna make it taste even better. And so the butter's picking up some of the flavor from the pan, the crispy bits of fish, getting a little bit of the flavor from the lime and from the herbs. And most of it's gonna stay in the pan. You know, so we did this great story last year. It's called The Healthy Cook's Guide to Fat. And it was really about when and how and why to use fat in a healthy cook's kitchen. You know, I think for so long we were told you can't eat fat. Uh, everything had to be low fat, but nobody was satisfied. So, you know, we're big proponents of using fat the right way in the cooking light kitchen. It's not about using a whole stick of butter, but it's smartly using a tablespoon or two to enrich the flavors and make you feel more satisfied. Okay, so I know this fish is almost done because I'm not getting a whole lot of resistance here. The other way I'm gonna tell is I'm gonna use this cake tester. If it slides through easily without any resistance, it's done. So this is about uh, medium. I wanna let it rest on a plate for a couple minutes before I serve it. Um, I think it's as simple as, you know, start with a very basic, very neutral flavored white flaky fish, simply season it, um, a little bit of butter helps, and um, you know, don't embellish it too much, and don't make a big deal of it. Just put it in front of them, um, and, and do it enough times where, uh, where you're not making a big deal of it, and uh, chances are they're going to like it. If it's been seasoned well, um, you know, chances are that they'll like it. I think there's a lot of people that don't eat fish, not just kids. You okay. Your fingers in that pan a lot. Mm -hmm. What are your cal are your big calluses there, or what? Are you feeling the heat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm just used to this. All right. So here's the deal. We've got two ways to cook fish. The fast way, which is a pan roasted redfish here, works great with mahi mahi, great with flounder, great with red snapper. Just to adjust the cook time depending on how thick the fillet is. Um, we did salt, pepper, turmeric, uh, and then we finished at the end with a little butter, with some thyme, and with some lime juice, or uh, sliced limes, and then we did slow-baked salmon in a pie pan. Super easy, you can do it on a, um, in a roasting pan. Salmon, salt, pepper, olive oil, lemon, tomatoes, thyme, shallots, 300 degree oven, 20 minutes, and you're done. Thank you guys for joining us. See you again on Facebook Live.